Um, okay, we need to start over here. We're live. We're oh, talking. We are live? We're talking. Okay. Guys, uh, <laughs> thanks a bunch for helping with Bricktown Throwdown. We're talking about Mount Scott right now. Mount Scott. So, um, one of the cool things about this Mount Scott workout is we're actually going to, we're, we're starting on the rig side of the, of the floor. So, um, the double under part is kind of confusing, and so there's different ones for each division. If you get confused, obviously you can talk to your, um, your, push it back. What is it called? Head judge. Head judge. That's a great person. Um, also, I have it written here a little bit easier to see um, on the scorecard. So notice that there's, you know, there's pro division, kind of has this craziness going on. I'll explain in a second. Uh, you know, scaled, or I mean, uh, amateur generations, a little bit simpler, and then scaled, real simple. So uh, for the pro division, they need to do. 25 double unders at each station and there's four stations so each partner is going to do a hundred so three two one go the first athlete will come out let's go right here SB. this is not drawn to scale ps three two one go they'll come out they're going to do their 25 double unders right here once you I, I would like to do you know a hand in the air when they're at 20 and then just down whenever they finish 25. I don't want you trying to do, you know, this as they're going. So, you know, he gets 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now he's gonna have to move a whole empty space. So there's, people aren't gonna be able to go like this, right, into the next one, because there's a whole empty space in between. He'll stop, he'll run forward to his next one, and then again, here, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. He'll run over a station, and then into another one. And you'll know they're rolling over it because there's a bar right there. He's not going to do stuff with a bar there. 25, right? He goes to the next one. 25. As soon as he finishes, he's on the finish mat. Then the next partner is going to be able to come in. And we're going to have some people who are over here, some judges who are over here that are kind of holding. And they're waiting until they see, you know, that, that first athlete get on the finish mat. And then the next athlete can come in. And it works like that for the pros for all 300 workout, 300 double unders. Can you see that? So, you know, 25, 25, 25, that's 100. The next athlete, 25, 25, that's 200. 25, 25, 25, 300. Now that's a time all in itself. So for the judges on this, they're really going to have to have their game together because they're using, one, they have two stopwatches. They're stopping one of the stopwatches right there and writing that time in. Right, because we're going to need to know what that time is so they can ride it, uh, you know, here, 250, that'd be really fast, 215, 90, 95, and then up here again if they would like, 215, 95, right, and we'll know that's their part A score. As, so with no rest, as soon as that third athlete finishes their double unders right here and goes into the, the, the finish mat, now the next partner can t take off, go out, and start their front squats. Right, we're getting all 25, I mean, they can split up however they want. So they're doing 25 reps at this station. If they want to transition, so let's say SB only wants to do 12, and the next partner is going to do some, he has to run off and they tag at the finish mat. So then the next partner would run all the way back up here and then finish them out or do however many reps they want. And they can switch out however they want in whatever order. Now notice that we've also set that up Pretty simple on the scorecard because we want to make it easy for you guys to remember. So, you know, if they make it through five, you can just put an X. They make it through 10. You know, if they get through uh, 10 and then they do two more before they transition, you can just write a 12 in there. And then, you know, the next partner's got to get three before that would get X'd out. So hopefully that'll help you see where they're at on this with five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, hang on. SB, do, uh, do your squat clean. The squat clean count. SB, it's a lightweight, so SB's trying to go fast, so he's not going to stand all the way up. We have to make sure they stand all the yeah, way Yeah, do up. the knees, but a forward lean. Yeah. That's what we're worried about right yeah, there. that's what we're going to see. You just yell hips, 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 hips. You know? You, and no, no rep them if you have to when they start going fast like that. So after all 25 front squats are done, they're now pushing it forward. They're not allowed to do bar facing burpees on this station. This is only the front squat station. Then they'll move forward to the bar facing burpee station. Now we need athletes to be facing it straight on and we're asking them to jump over with two feet. Now they can step up, they can pitter pattern when they get to the other side, but they have to jump off of two feet. Show, them, the a, show them a bad one where you go over with one foot. Yeah. Right, you were not letting that. They gotta jump over with both feet, okay? 
Sweet. So again, switching off however they want, running back and tagging to, to get the next one back. Uh, when they want to tag out? No, he can just run. I know, but if they don't finish a burpee, right? Yeah, they have to jump over and then tag off. That was not yeah. going to count, so if they go here to do one and they just take off their run, that's not going to count as a burpee. No, yeah, that wouldn't count as a burpee. Yeah, you got to get your chest And also, too. if they start doing stuff in that lane, they start doing burpees over there, you just don't count them. Yeah, those just, just don't count. Them. You got to roll it, roll it. Those don't count. Those three don't count, SP. I'm sorry. So after the 20, again, both partners are still over there. After the 25... Bar facing burpees, they'll move it forward, and now we're going into the hang to overhead. We've never done now, this before this in a competition. For the when they take it, anytime they take it off the ground, they have to deadlift it up and then go below the knees, right? And now they can do their show them a couple of hang to overhead. So okay. we can do you know hang to overhead here. Yeah, he's going below the knees and then all the way overhead. Now if he sets it down, either because he's tired or because he's transitioning with a partner, it's on the ground, so now he's got to deadlift it all the way up and then go down back below his knees for his first rep. You can snatch it too. Only for his first rep. So yeah, let's say he drops it. So now he's gonna deadlift it all the way up and then he's gonna snatch it. Yeah, so this will count, right? He's going below the knees and all the way above. Sweet, sweet. I want think. us to be real conscious of people not locking their knees out when the weight's overhead. So let's watch SB kind of from the side, maybe back here, Jared. So he's going to get it up to his shoulders and he's going to come. Yeah. yeah. So we want that. We want those knees to get locked out. So here I would yell knees, knees, knees. Good. Lock them out. Good. That's a rep, right? So no rep if you need to, but when they have it overhead, they've got to lock the knees out before they bring the weight down. I hate that more than anything. Anything, anything. Okay. <laughs> so again, they're tra transitioning however they want to get their 25 reps done. Now we're moving forward and we're going into handstand push-ups. So for the pro, it's going to be um, strict handstand push-ups. And what we're saying is gonna be strict is that they're not actively kipping with their lower body. So we'll watch Espy, he'll kick up on the wall. His hand, his head comes down and touches the mat. Nice, he presses up, and he's covering his, he's covering his ears with his arms. That's what we're wanting to see, right? Just kind of not poking that head through crazy, but he's covering the ears with his arms. Cool. And you got to hit your head, not your hair. That's yeah, the... if you have anybody with some top knots, let me or the head judges know, and we'll tell them to take their top knots down. But that's not going to be allowed. Cool. Um, um, but. Yeah, so your butt cannot touch the wall at any point on a strict handstand push-up. And on the, even the kipping handstand push-ups for generation and amateur, your butt can only touch the wall at the bottom. It can't touch it at the top. Could you demo that as you want to touch it at the top? So his butt's on the wall there, that's good. But if it's here, that's a no rep. He needs to get his butt off the wall, now it's a rep, right? We've got to be locked out with that butt off the wall on the kipping handstand Can they slide back down with the butt on the wall? They can slide back down with their butt on the wall. Um, the scale division is going to be doing parallel push-ups. forgot to get those here. We did forget. It's okay. It's all right. Where they touch the band with their chest and then they lock out. So let's just kind of come over here. We'll pretend like these are some parallels here. So if I have these parallels, one of the things I'm worried about is that people are going to do these where their shoulders are not above their hands. So in order to make it a good push-up, they have to finish with their shoulders above their hands. I mean, they can like worm it, whatever, but they need to get those shoulders back above, not behind their hands. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what your push-ups look like. Uh, okay, that's fine. Good. All right, we'll count them like that. There'll be a band across. You'll touch your chest on the band. They're super, those are super easy to judge. All right, after the 50 handstand push-ups, now we're going back down the line. 25, oh yeah, so. When they're coming this way, we need all athletes to face out, to face away from the finish mat. When it's time for them to go back this way, all athletes are going to face towards the finish mat. And you'll have to remind them of that because, like, if SB came and, you know, transition, go transition with me way back there, right? And then I come running on, I'm probably going to want to start just like right here, right? When I can, I got to get back over and then go. So it's, it makes a difference on which way you're facing. Again, front squats at this station. Bar facing burpees at this station. No, I oh, I was wrong. Ground overhead at this station. Bar facing burpees at this station. Front squats at this station. Once their 25 front squats are done here, they're running. The other two teammates are already on the finish mat. Bam, when they hit the finish mat, their time is up. And you can write it down in here. Now, uh, we're going to have names printed to, for our judges just to make it really easy for us to ask you questions. 
uh, you'll have a captain's signature, team name and heat and all that stuff will be filled in already. Let's say that they don't finish the workout, which a lot of them aren't. Well, so hopefully this whole time you've been like marking these off, right? And you'll see how far they get, you know where they're going through. Let's say they made it through 12 of the bar facing burpees, 12 of them. Well, now we can just kind of figure that out. So it's 150 plus 12. So that's gonna give me 162. And that would be their final reps, right? And I have these written over here on the side for you guys so that it's really easy for y'all to figure that out. Cool? The double unders for the uh, scaled and the double unders for the uh, generations division and amateur division are all gonna be a little bit different. Instead of having these 25 markers right here, we're gonna have some 100 markers. Right, and so the teams will be able to see. It's on the other side, actually. Oh, man. There's going to be these 100 markers on the ground. And so with those divisions, they don't have to do 25 at each station. They just have to do them in these sections. So, you know, double under 1 through 100 has to be done right here. Double under 101 through 200 has to be done right here. Double under 201 through 300 has to do right here. So some athlete might get out here and do 15 and then run all the way off. That's fine. And then the next athlete might run in and they do all, the, you know, they finish the 100, they move forward, they go into some more, they get through this one, they move here, get a little bit, and then they get off. And then the last partner comes and finishes. Now, the thing about that is that they can only go one direction. So they're only going this way. That means that if they transition too early and that third partner is struggling, struggling, that third partner is still out here. They're the ones that are having to do everything to finish it out. And then it's just like normal, right? They'll finish, they'll write their time down, and they'll go back to 25, 25, 25, 50, 25, 25, 25, done. And that'll let us have these two scores that we've been talking about, right? The double underscore, which is part A, and then the whole workout, all of it together, which is part B. So part A is just the double under time right, because you have one stopwatch for, that's for that. And then part B is double unders and the workout, right, because you have a second stopwatch for that. So at three, two, one, go, in the very beginning of the workout, you'll start both stopwatches. You'll stop one of them here, and you'll stop one of them here. Does that make sense, Jaren? Mm -hmm. That's confusing, guys. I know you will have good head judges that'll help you out with that, and uh, we'll have the, the, the area marked with all the numbers just to make it super easy. Cool? Thanks a bunch, gang.